This is a review of episodes 1 through 12 of Nana. If you haven't seen through episode 12 of this show, then do not watch any further in this video because you will be spoiled. It's really quite interesting to see what show for girls translates into and how dramatic and scandalous things have already gotten. I think I've gasped dramatically at least once in every episode. But even though everything is played so over the top and emotional, I do think that there's an odd sense of realism portrayed in not only the characters' personalities, but their relationships as well. Plus, there's such an interesting variety of characters that I think a lot of fun comes from just trying to identify yourself in the cast. Honestly, I'm a little bit disappointed with the character that I pretty much immediately honed in on as obviously being me, Kyosuke if you ever wondered what I'm like in a relationship. <laughs> I'm not proud of it. I'm just very chill and drama-free and unromantic. Which is why I don't usually connect with shows like this, because it always comes off as a little bit silly because it's trying too hard. But in a way, even though I do feel like there are some moments where they're clearly trying to make you tear up or swoon, I don't think it takes itself too seriously. It knows that in a relationship there is that underlying awkwardness and pettiness, and sometimes you just have to go through the motions of being romantic, even if neither of you are feeling it. Up until the last five seconds of episode 12, there was no obvious bad guy of this crumbling relationship. But I'll get to that later. A show like this really hinges on having successful and likable protagonists, so I'm going to start with Nana and Nana first. Komatsu Nana has been nicknamed Hachi in the show, so for the sake of clarity and not mixing them up in this review, I'm going to refer to her as Hachi. Hachi is this bizarre mixture of somehow growing up too early, but also never growing up. We saw her flashback with Asano and how it totally screwed her up. But it's odd that she wasn't messed up from her obvious mistress status or the fact that he was so much older and married. She was messed up over the fact that he maybe gave her a fake name and didn't love her, even though it was pretty obvious early on that their relationship was going to be strictly physical. She referred to him as her boyfriend, and it's pretty evident that he wasn't even remotely that, and I think she knew it too. She stayed hung up on him for so long that even when Shoji came along and had some genuine affection for her, she didn't want to start anything new. She suddenly had to push him away and make some guy friends for the first time ever. There are some people out there who need to be in a relationship or need to have a crush on someone at all times or else they can't properly function. And if that's who you are, then chase it, do it. But Hachi is just kind of default mode, very flirtatious with everyone, even women. That's why she likes most people she meets and why it's very easy to warm up to her. I think it's also very easy to find her annoying, but that also gives her a lot of room to grow. Her perception of what a relationship is was also very interesting to watch as she vowed to make more time for Shoji and be the doting wife figure that she figured he wanted. Of course, she completely abandoned that immediately for the sake of her friend's band. Hachi is a very imperfect character who tries to be the best for everyone, so she spreads herself too thin. I'm excited to see her transition into adult behavior as she learns more about the world and what it means to live on her own. In another context, I might find this character insufferably annoying, but in this show, in this situation, she's kind of perfect. Osaki Nana is much more easy to like, simply because she's so cool. At first I thought it would be important that her origin story was devoid of a boyfriend character because she's a strong lady who needs to stand up on her own and do her own thing. But that's not the way of the world, and just because you have a boyfriend doesn't mean you're bogged down in a relationship or defined by your man. When she doesn't have a boyfriend, she's the same character as when she had a boyfriend. She's not wandering around in the streets looking for a man to heal her broken heart. In fact, you could probably say that she was trying so hard not to be that girl that she ended up making herself kind of miserable. She didn't want to end up being the doting wife figure for when Ren came home, just like Hachi totally wanted to be. So she felt it was important that she made the decision to go to Tokyo on her own, even though Ren happened to be there. The trick to creating a good female character is giving her an end goal that doesn't have everything to do with a man. But if there is a man involved, she can still exist independently from him. And her personality is not all about whether or not she's going to hook up with him. Your relationship status should not be a personality trait. 
and for so many female characters, that's really what it is. Like Hachi, Nana also has a rather flirtatious personality, but she kind of turns it on only when she wants something. Because the story is told through Hachi's narration, we learn a lot about Nana based on what Hachi is observing about her. Nana is put up on a pedestal a bit because of this, since we never see Nana look at Hachi and have that same respect and adoration. But I think that's mostly because Nana is more of an elusive character, someone that we all can kind of aspire to be like, because she lives such a badass life where she's in a band, oh my god, that's so cool, and she's so independent, and we all kind of want to be that. Hachi has no desire to become Nana, but she can see the great traits in her and aspire to be more like her. Hachi is definitely a dog, and Nana is definitely a cat, which makes their interactions all the more entertaining to watch. The thing that makes this show for me, though, is the colorful array of secondary characters. Obviously, we have to start with Shoji and Ren, because um, they're the boyfriend characters, and both of them have kind of started out this series with a betrayal. Ren joined a different band, and um, Shoji had uh, a relationship with a girl that he was stringing along for a while. Obviously, it's not the same level as Betrayal. They're, they're completely different. But it is creating kind of a theme where the girl is betrayed by the man. Except for maybe Kyosuke, but he and Jun just act so married already that maybe it's not even an issue. I was so disappointed in Shoji because everyone in the show had me convinced that he really did want to marry Nana and he was working so hard to support her and he even seemed to convince himself of that fact too. But then he comes across Sachiko who, despite being visually innocent is actually a mustache twirling villain. At first, she didn't know that Shoji had a girlfriend. And then when she did find out, she looked like she was going to back off and do the right thing. Hachi herself has actually played the mistress once before, but at least she went into it knowing what it was and admitting to what it was, not like Sachiko who was like, I'm not going to cause any trouble for you or your girlfriend. If you're going to be a dirtbag, then own it. Don't act like you're a paradigm of purity who just got swept up into the moment. She demonstrated that she is a little bit manipulative, like when she pretended to lose her shoe so that Shoji would miss the last train and hang out with her. And the desperate crying plea was kind of on the same level, even if she wasn't conscious of what she was doing. Now, Shoji is definitely in the wrong too, though I think he is someone who will admit to it and feel bad about it. It doesn't make it any better, but it, at least it, there's a way to move forward. The whole situation just sucks because not cheating on your girlfriend should be the given. Ugh. And you know, you have Ren who quit the band to go join another one, but you can understand why he did it. It makes sense and it can be rationalized, especially when he's got friends as cool as the ones he's got who can be not only accepting of what he decided to do, but support him as well. But cheating is so much more black and white that any attempt to rationalize or justify what Shoji and Sachiko did will only put them more in the wrong. I look forward to Kyosuke and Jun judging them once they find out. There's such a great parallel to Hachi and Shoji's trying too hard relationship, although speaking from experience I can say that the laid back approach might end up hurting them in the end. The band is great too, in all their own little ways. Yasu is one of those guys that we all wish we had one of. We all wish we had a Yasu. He will fix all the problems even when they're tiny. I'm so glad he came to Tokyo to join the band. And they did such an awesome job with that fake out when he showed up at the apartment and we thought it was going to be Ren. And they strung us along for like a full minute before they made the reveal that it was Yasu. It would have been nice if it was Ren, but I think it's too early for him to come back. It's no wonder why Hachi believes that Nana is in love with Yasu. I'm kind of in love with Yasu. And then there's Nobu, who's your typical cheerful idiot character, but he can be nice and sweet when he really tries. He and Hachi are actually sort of perfect for each other, in the sense that maybe they're too perfect for each other because it's always kind of dangerous to date yourself. But if she breaks up with Shoji, which I hope she does, then it might be fun to try something kind of casual with Nobu, just to, you know, rebound. I want Hachi to go around and spend some time not being in love. 
Then we have Shin, who is a bubbly but mysterious ninth grader who said a couple of cryptic things about his family life and home life. All of these band members are so drama-free that I feel like we have to get them into some love triangles or give them some damage for this to be a proper show for girls. Or maybe that's what's so great about these secondary characters. Their hands are clean and they're just looking at the drama of the protagonists. I kind of like how uncomplicated they are right now, but it also worries me that they can't sustain that in a show this long. The ultimate twist would be if Hachi ended up with Ren and Nana ended up with Shoji. But if that happens, I'm just gonna barf everywhere and then never watch another show again. Obviously the most crucial thing for a show like this is for the relationship between the two protagonists to be really good and really solid. If it wasn't believable and wasn't fun to watch, then the premise would fall apart and no one would have any interest in watching it. Hachi is naive and Nana is closed off, but they're both very reckless in their own ways. But they also have experience in being friends with the other person in their own current group of friends. June is a lot like Nana and Nobu is a lot like Hachi, so in that sense they know how to deal with the other. I look forward to when Nana is going to help Hachi through the Shoji cheating debacle once it comes to light. And I'm also really looking forward to how Hachi's going to react when she finds out about Nana's relationship with Ren. As a side note, if Shin really was as big a fan of Ren as he claims he is, then why didn't he know that he was currently playing with his old band? He must know. He must have orchestrated this somehow. But anyway, that's all I'm going to say about these episodes. I'll see you next time for episodes 13 and 14. Bye! At first, she didn't know that Shoji had a boyfriend. Girlfriend. <laughs> I'm so glad he came to Tokyo to be in the band. And they did such an awesome job with that fake out when he showed up at the apartment. <laughs> and I'm also really looking forward to when Nana finally finds out about when Hachi finally... <laughs> They're both named Nana! <laughs>